Hi, my dear friends. Today we will discuss the third part of uveitis, which include parasitic uveitis. Parasitic uveitis will include the following: toxoplasmosis, toxocariasis, oncocerciasis, and cystocercosis. Toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis is caused by Toxoplasma jundi, which is an obligate intracellular protozoa. CAT is the definitive host with intermediate host including mice, livestock, birds, and humans. Oocysts are excreted in CAT feces and then ingested by intermediate host fall through contaminated water supply. Occasionally, Infection may be transmitted through organ transplantation or blood transfusion. Systemic features Toxoplasmosis can be presented by the following Congenital toxoplasmosis with neurological and visceral involvement. Retinochoriditis may occur in over of 75% of cases. The second presentation is postnatal childhood toxoplasmosis, which represents 50% of cases. Third presentation is acquired toxoplasmosis, which occurs in immunocompetent adults. Fourth presentation is toxoplasmosis in immunocompromised patients and presented by meningoencephalitis, neuromitis, and retinochoriditis. Ocular features of toxoplasmosis Toxoplasmosis about 20 to 60% of all posterioritis cases. It can be presented by reactivation of a previous inactive cyst containing scar, especially in immunocompetent persons. It can also be presented by recurrent episodes of inflammation due to cysts rupture and release of hundreds of trachezoids into normal retinal cysts. The last ocular presentation can occur from previous congenital infection and can be detected later in life with typical retinochoroidal scar. Clinical picture Symptoms include unilateral acute or subacute onset of flutters, bilingovision, and photophobia. Signs include spillover anteriorvitis, a single inflammatory focus of fluffy white retinitis or retinochoriditis, as in this photo, we can see an area of fluffy white retinitis or retinochoriditis. Also, toxoplasmosis can be presented as a de novo fossae, not associated with an old scar. Other ocular presentation include vitritis, vasculitis, optic disc edema, extensive and fulminant retinal involvement. Healing usually occurs in immunocompetent hosts within 6 to 8 weeks. Although vitreous obesities take longer to clear. The inflammatory focus is replaced by a sharply demarcated atrophic scar, which is characteristic for toxoplasmosis infection. Investigations The first by serology, by detection of antibodies against toxoplasma. Include toxoplasma IgM antibodies are detectable in serum within one to two weeks of initial infection. While IgA antibodies means that the infection has been acquired within last year. In addition to serology, we can do PCR testing of intraocular fluid which is variably sensitive but highly specific. Treatment Evidence for efficacy of current treatment regimen is limited. Also, eradication of parasite has not been demonstrated but parasite activity and multiplication may be reduced. Spontaneous resolution generally occurs. Treatment is not administrated in every case. So, we should know that treatment of toxoplasmosis is not very effective. It can't eradicate the parasite totally. However, it reduces the parasite activity and multiplication. Indications for treatment in cases of site retaining lesions which involve macula, papulomacular bundle, optic nerve head, or major blood vessels, or in cases of severe trice and impatient 
with immunocompromisation. We should start in these cases with the strong steroids like prednisolone 1 mg per kilogram is given initially and tabled according to the clinical response and should be combined with a specific antitoxoplasma agent including pyrimethamine combined with sulfadiazine. Classic or triple therapy can include also clindamycin. We can inject clindamycin with dexamethasone directly in the vitreous and it can be effective uh, as triple therapy in reactivated infection. Other lines of therapy include azithromycin, protromixazole, which is combination of trimethoprene, sulfamethoxazole, clindamycin, chemical steroid and mediatic for antiviritis and antimicrobial maintenance therapy in immunocompromised patients. Toxocariasis. Toxocariasis is caused by infestation with Toxocara canis. Babas are more commonly infected. Human infestation occur okay by ingestion of soil or food containing this over shade in canin feces. Usually, young children are at high risk for this infection. Once ingested by a child, over develop into a larva which penetrate the intestinal wall and travel through the circulation to different organs like lungs, skin, brain, and eyes with resultant local inflammation. Clinically, it is, can be asymptomatic, which is common. The second presentation, which is called visceral toxicolysis, or what is called visceral larva migrants, which is caused by systemic infection of variable severity and usually occur in children. Presentation of visceral larva migraines including fever, abdominal pain, pneumitis, lymphadenopathy, hepatomegaly, and myocarditis. In this picture, we can show the larva in, in the lungs with resultant pneumites. The third presentation of toxicolysis is covered toxicolysis which is a mild systemic form. Ocular toxicolysis, or what's called ocular larva migrants. It is associated with a lower parasitic load and typically unilateral and usually presented by a permanent visual impairment. It can be presented in the eye with first chronic endophthalmitis and the main presentation here is leukocorea, strabismus, flutters and unilateral visual loss. In examination we can see antiovitis, vitritis, chorotonitis, papillitis and fundus granuloma. The second presentation can be presented by posterior bowl or peripheral bowl granuloma without inflammation. Third presentation, a choreoretinal scar due to inflammation and healing, and lastly by diffuse unilateral subacute neuritonitis. Investigations which can be done for these cases. The main aim here is to differentiate toxocara granuloma from more dangerous tumor, which is the retroblastoma. We can do full blood count with characteristic xenophilia, especially in cases of visceral larva migraines. Also, we can notice elevated IgE levels in the form of hypergamma globinemia. Serology we can detect the antibodies to toxicara cans only in 50% of cases. Ultrasonography of the eye, usually the lesion with resultant tractional bands and uh, tractional retinal detachment. We can take aqueous and vitreous sampling for isinophilia and for antibody detection and even by doing PCR. Biopsy of granuloma of the skin or elsewhere for the larva is sometimes possible. Ocular treatment. The main treatment by prevention, by good hygiene to avoid ingestion of these parasites. The second line is topical, regional, and systemic steroid to reduce inflammation and resultant healing problems. Third line is anti-helminthic agent, including mebendazole and cyabendazole, noting that warm medicines may promote more inflammation, and this is the problem in these cases that the problem is not in the 
warm but the problem in the resultant inflammation and the healing effect lastly we can do vitrectomy for your site threatening reactional sequelae Oncocercases or what is called river blindness Oncocercases mainly affect eyes and the skin it is the second most common cause of infectious blindness in the world. It is endemic in different areas of Africa and other world regions. It is called by a parasite which is called Oncocerca vulvaris. The vector of it is Simulium plaque fly, which feeds in fast following water, hence the name river blindness. So this infection usually occurs near rivers. Alpha are transmitted when fly bites to obtain blood from the host. They migrate to subcutaneous site to form Oncocercoma, where microfilaria are produced by adult or Clinically, this microfilaria, when degenerate, it excites an intense inflammatory action in different sites, accounting for the most of the clinical manifestation of disease. Systemic features, mainly in the skin, including pruritus, macrolobular rash, uh, which involves uh, pathogs, extremities, and areas of hypo and hyperpigmentation of the skin, which is called leopard skin. In this photo, we can see this hypo and hyperpigmentation area, which is called leopard skin, like the skin of leopard. Eye manifestations. Live microfilaria may be seen in the cornea, in the vitreous, suspended in the anterior chamber. After patient has both shells face down for a few minutes, followed by immediate slit lamp examination, like in this photo. Two is an early feature with barely shaped pupillary dilatation due to pseudocyanicky. Also, keratitis can be seen. Keratitis in cases of oncocercases characterized by what is called banketed keratitis with snowflakes obesities and the form infiltrates caused by dead microfilaria. Lesions are commonly located in the site of 3 and 9 o'clock tides in the anterior stroma of the colon as in this photo. This will followed by severe inflammation and the healing by opacification and leading what is called progressive sclerosing keratitis and it will involve lastly all the cornea and the resultant corneal opacification. Coriotonitis is the last presentation of oncocercases in the eye and usually bilateral and they mainly affect the temporal fundus sparing the macula until late. Treatment will include Ivermectin, which kills the microfilaria. Uh, however, Ivermectin occasionally precipitates inflammation, so prophylactic prednisolone can be used in conjunction with Ivermectin. Other drugs include moxidectin, doxycycline, suramine, and steroids in cases of anterior viites. Cystocircosis. It refers to infection caused by cystocircus cellulose, which is the larva form of tinea solium. The infection caused by ingestion of cysts of tinea solium in case of undercooked pork meat, leading to the uh, intestinal uh, tapeworm development, which is called tinesis. This worm will then shed eggs lead to larva infection cystocircosis when ingested by the same or another individual. In this photo, we can see the human which is the definitive host and he infected by the ingestion of the uh, cyst of tinea solia. Clinical features, systemic feature that this can involve lungs, muscles and CNS causing what's called new cystocircosis. MRI and CT are effective at demonstrating cysts. Brinix ray also can be used because it shows the calcified cyst. We can use serology and stool analysis for diagnosis. Ocular features include cysts on the conjunctiva and occasionally in the orbit and eyelids. And T chamber also can show a free floating cysts. In this photo, we can see larva entering 
in the subretinal space causing exudative retinal detachment. They can also pass into the vitreous and release toxins which induce severe intense vision threatening inflammatory reaction. Treatment by systemic steroid to control inflammation. Also, we can surgically remove these larvae from the anterior chamber vitus and subretinal space, and we can use antihelminthic such as albendazole in case of systemic disease and in combination with steroid to reduce inflammation. Lastly, we will speak about diffuse unilateral subacute neurotinitis which is a clinical syndrome due to the presence of a single motile subretinal nematode such as toxocaracanes, bilis caries, prokinis, and ankylostoma caninum can be misdiagnosed as multifocal choroiditis clinically the presentation by insidious monoocular visual decrease diagnosis is essentially Clinical. We can use electroretinogram. The ERG results are subnormal, and the, especially in early disease. In acute disease, we can see groups of grayish white outer retinal lesions with vitreous bubblites and retinal vasculitis. As in this photo, we can see these grayish white outer retinal lesions. In this stage, disease presented by optic atrophy, retinal vascular attenuation, and diffuse retinal pigment epithelial degeneration. Treatment by photocoagulation, especially when warm can be visualized, systemic albendazole, or vitrectomy, in maybe appropriate in some cases, and cystoid cover is essential to reduce inflammation in all modalities of therapy. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you.